Let's talk about good etiquette at the workplace. So good etiquette at the workplace is something they never teach you in school. And I wish I would have learned it in school. So it made it so much easier to transition. And working in developed markets and countries for so long, it might not seem that obvious, or it might be hard to distinguish what good work etiquettes are. Of course, good etiquettes at the workplace are dependent on the job role, the industry, but I'm gonna specifically focus on tech and office work. Okay, let's start the day. Let's talk about following up. You need to follow up to make sure something is done you need to chase others and let others chase you. It's always important to close the loop on what you're working on. So following up in either direction works. Hey, I owe you this. Hey, you owe me this. There's many times in the workplace when everybody is just too busy. So how do you know what you've asked for will get done? We can't be expected to have everything in memory. Everything is moving at 100 miles per hour or there's so many moving parts. Use reminders for certain tasks, set some time on your calendar, and make sure you close that loop. Following up also means asking questions about the subject. If you don't understand something, it's your duty to follow up and say, hey, I don't quite get this. Can you help me with this? I know I owe you some work, but let me clarify the understanding. Following up also gives a really good impression for the people you work with. It means, oh, this person has their shit together. You know, they care about what I'm working on. This should be done to colleagues, customers, and everybody you interact with at work. For example, when you follow up with customers, they really appreciate it. It makes people feel special and that you really care about the job at hand. When you've promised someone that you're gonna do something, for God's sake, follow up. I need some coffee. much better. And the next one is be personable. First and foremost, you need to remember names. Remembering names is a sign of respect and that you actually care who they are. It's a bit more difficult in Southeast Asia where names are pretty difficult to pronounce, but usually people have a nickname. I think the simplest form is just to say, how do I pronounce your name? Don't forget to introduce yourself. If it's the first time you've met someone, it's important establishing that rapport from the get-go with a handshake. Come in with a firm handshake. My name is Chris. It's not that common in Southeast Asia to shake hands for some reason. Don't underestimate the need for small talk. This is really important. Small talk is everything. It helps you establish rapport, help you establish trust, it helps you find out about a person and really builds relationships. Typical small talk, for example, you can talk about the weather, you can talk about the weekend, you can talk about your pets, you can talk about sports, you can talk about COVID, easy. You can talk about anything. You just need to small talk. You have to, of course, be personable with your small talk. Refer to something they might have said before. It's incredible what some small talking does. Hello? Oh, oh, delivery? Yeah, five minutes, thank you. Groceries. Always set a date. People like working towards deadlines and we all know that time is money, time is money, money. It's important that we all set a date and time to review the piece of work. 
or at least give someone an estimated time to say, hey, I think I might finish this by this time, etc., etc. However, don't be afraid to ask, when do you think we could have a look at that again? Having an agreed upon date where we're working toward will hold each other accountable for one following up, but also for delivering the work. Set a date. Learn to ask questions. <laughs> Let's talk about questions. Not asking questions can be super damaging and can waste a lot of time. Imagine if it takes a week for you to find the answer when you could have just asked a simple question and it would have solved everything. I've experienced so much of people not asking questions and then regretting it later, saying that they understand but they really don't and it's just wasted so much time of back and forth but also understand that there's no such thing as a stupid question. For example, if there's an acronym that comes up in a meeting, it's okay to not know it. Lots of different industries have different acronyms. Don't be afraid of just looking a little bit naive. It's okay to play the naive card. Ask first, clarify first, and then act later. When we're talking about questions, answer questions. Don't just babble. I used to work with a few people with that when you ask them a question, a very direct one at that, they just never answered it. They will just beat around the bush and I never got a firm yes, no, or clarification. You need to learn to ask better questions. Keep your questions very direct, short and concise, so you get the best possible answer so then you can work on it. Okay, back to it. Try the five whys. Wait, before I chow down, let's talk about meetings. These are the main points of how to run a productive meeting. Learn to facilitate a meeting. Don't invite too many people. Invite the people that are necessary to get productive discussions going. Get the decision makers in the room so there's absolutely no confusion on what the next steps are. Ask for everybody's opinion. Do a round table. Don't interrupt. Come on time. Nobody wants to have their time wasted when you called the meeting and you're late. You need to respect each other's time. Not only do you need to be on time, but you also need to finish on time. Time box your conversations. You don't want to run over. Likely some of us will have back-to-back -back meetings. Make sure there's an agenda for your meeting. So things that need to be discussed are discussed. A lot of times we ramble on and on about some other priorities we have, which has nothing to do with this meeting. Keep it focused, have a agenda. I can't stress how important taking notes are. You wanna make sure your meeting is productive and useful, but who's gonna record what's been said and discussed and agreed on? Well, you. You have to have the habit of taking notes all the time. In any situation, any conversation, you should be taking notes. If things aren't written down, it doesn't exist and it wasn't discussed. Please take notes. Please, please take notes. Wait, no, not, not here, not here. Let's get out of the house.
something we don't really talk about too often is the importance of recognition when we're talking about good workplace etiquette. It's a very good habit to build. It's important to praise work and to recognize the people who have helped you and not take credit for the work that they've done. Call out good work in an email, in a meeting, and just say thank you. I don't think we do that enough. Calling people out on the individual level, to the team level, to the company level. One of my favorites is asking for feedback. We don't really adopt a feedback first sort of model when it comes to workplace etiquette, and I believe we should. Making a feedback model to how you approach work can help you improve rapidly over time. Whether you're a designer or an engineer or a project manager or any sort of office worker, asking for feedback can give you valuable insight on your performance and how you are and what's required of you. So then you can be better. There's always been times where we've walked out of a meeting and been a bit insecure of how we performed. Why don't we ask for feedback so then we can improve? It's also important to understand that feedback doesn't just go one way, it's both ways. If your manager's not doing something that's really helping you to grow or listening correctly, let them know that you would like to be coached in a certain way. Don't forget feedback is both ways. Not only do you want to ask for feedback, but you also want to provide feedback. Feedback is so important to continuous learning, to motivate, and to improve how teams work together. Together.